Pianist Elaine Grimo is here with me on Classical Conversations, and today we get to hear all about her new album, Silent Songs, with music by Valentin Silvestrov. Elaine collaborated with baritone Konstantin Kreml on this, and their recording is releasing this March with Deutsche Grammophon. So I'm very, very, look, very much looking forward to uh, learning more about this. Elaine, welcome on to Classical Conversations. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. So first of all, when is it that you first encountered Valentin Silvestrov's music? It was quite a long time ago already, nearly 18 years ago, I received um, actually the original recording of the silent songs with Valentin Silvestrov at the piano mm -hmm. um, on the occasion of my birthday. And that was my mm -hmm. introduction to the music. Um, I put the CD in the player and I decided right there and then I fell in love with his uh, with his language, mm -hmm. um, his world. And I knew that I would uh, learn this cycle and hopefully get to perform it and uh, and even record it at some point. So it's taken mm -hmm. a long time, um, but better late than never. And of course, much earlier though, um, fortunately I got to, to, you know, learning some other pieces by Valentin Silvestrov, The Messenger being one of them, two dialogues with postlude, uh, postscript, as the case may be, mm -hmm. Bagatelles. Um, so I got to perform his uh, music in concert um, already, you know, now for a decade and a half. He's been a sort of, you know, red thread. He's been an important presence and uh, and he reappears on a regular basis in my programs. And so, but being able to finally do the mm -hmm. silent films is something very special. And I, I owe that... Um, of course, to Constantin uh, for mm -hmm. having you know taken it on and 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 for having made it possible. Yeah, well, that's certainly a birthday gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> oh, well, yes, yes, yes. For me, so, anyway, yes. What do you think? Uh, what is it about his music that captured your heart so much that it stayed with you for almost twenty years? Yeah, I think it's it's purity. The fact that it is um, it emanates from the human soul. There's something mm -hmm. very um, humane about it there is there is it's so it's simply it is so emotional and if music mm -hmm. is emotional we don't really need it you know then it's some intellectual exercise and yeah i mean it might be impressive in many ways and and mm -hmm. and, and convincing and intriguing and interesting but but at the end of the day i mean you know this is an emotional journey and his music is so um so evocative mm -hmm. um and also incredibly varied within this this very um, subtle range of dynamic um, of you know dynamic markings. I mean, the music rarely reaches the mezzo forte; doesn't mm -hmm. go beyond it in this cycle. Of course, if you listen to his sixth symphony or many other mm -hmm. any other of his, of his earlier pieces, it's different. But within this cycle, there's something so incredibly soft spoken, but at the same time so powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the music is utterly poetic, mm -hmm. um, very, very strong, absolutely gorgeous. So music that is so poetic certainly deserves performers that are inherently poetic, I think, like yourself and also like Constantine. And I'm curious how that collaboration came about. How did you first meet him and what made you think he'd be perfect for this song cycle? Well, I, I, you know, I heard him, um, so I, I knew his voice. I knew what a magnificent instrument his voice is. Um, got to guess the type of artist that he is in terms of his, you know, generosity of, of, of heart and spirit, um, the way that he takes projects on, the fact that he gives everything to it, uh, his open-mindedness, his, you know, sort of sense of adventure in what he does. And so I was hoping, I was really not, based on you know previous experiences having um, solicited colleagues mm -hmm. to do this um, I feared that it might be a challenge because the schedule was already quite busy and we met relatively late um, mm -hmm. in you know May of 2022 for a project which was to take place in September of 22. Um, and, you know, he was going to be in Salzburg during the summer and was at the Munich Opera mm -hmm. uh, before that. And so um, 
yeah, I was just very lucky that he was uh, willing uh, to make space for this and, and to take this on and also to sing in Russian for the first time. It was something that he knew yeah. he always wanted to do. Obviously, he has a gift for Slavic languages, perhaps because he has Romanian uh, uh, roots as well as, as German. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, and he's incredibly gifted, but mm -hmm. he just, yeah, he's uh, he's a superb artist. I'm very thankful to have gotten to work with him and realize this project with him. Wonderful. I am interested in hearing more about the, the poetry of the piece, too. What are some of the featured poets on this album? So, um, well, there is Pushkin, Keats, Mandelstam, uh, Balinsky. There's there's actually quite a few. Um, well, if you look at the English translation uh, of, of those poems, there is, it has a lot to do with this... Uh, uh, Qualité autonale, we say in French, something to do with with um, yeah, with fall, with the autumn, with winter, with with a broken heart. Mm. Um, you know, all of the 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 themes that that you know capture the the challenges of the human spirit and mm -hmm. and a lot of nostalgia, but at the same time, a lot of hope. So it is it is music which captures you know the full spectrum of of um, of expression within the human um, destiny in a way, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it is something which is extremely relatable to because you it's it's like a mirror. There is a purity in this music. There is a transparency. Um, and it's always shimmering with with emotions, with something which is very, mm. you know, in French we say, uh, a fleur de peau, something mm. which is always very close to the to the the skin. It originates, you know, within, um, but it is so pervasive that it just, you know, will will work its way up to the surface and 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 operates a sort of, you know, uh, physical metamorphosis in a way. Mm. I was reading that uh, Valentin was hoping to create a, a a sort of semantic overtones with this combination of texts. And I guess I was wondering if you could shed some light on what he means by that. Is that just like the, the combination of these different themes all coming together to create something bigger? Or what does that mean to have semantic overtones? Hmm. I think because he starts from the text works with harmony and melody to have this this um incarnation mm -hmm. um of it at the same time it's like a whisper so it, it's almost like you lose sense of what's what's uh the reality and what is the reflection of it um and so it's it's augmented in that in that way but with so much subtlety i mean it's so understated Hmm. But it's like a magnifying glass, so it makes everything more, more, more palpable, more, yeah, more perceptible, more intense. Hmm. Um, and that is perhaps, perhaps, um, what he meant. Also, because if you look at the way he writes, actually, he told us after the concert, which was very funny, and he said it with a, with a, a lovely sort of sparkle in his mm -hmm. eye um, about the fact that when he was criticized for writing. Um, Two melodies, you know, when when the when Constantine is is singing, when the the the, the singer has the melody, where the piano is mm -hmm. actually playing the melody simultaneously mm -hmm. underneath the singer, and how he was apparently told that one doesn't do that, you know, that is just not what is supposed to be happening. Interesting. Um, in terms of of you know uh, correct composition mm -hmm. technique. And how he sort of brushed it away by saying that already at that time, you know, melody was such an endangered species that he would rather mm. write it write it twice than only once. Oh, interesting. <laughs> That's a unique perspective. Yeah, and and I so when that. you listen to the music and you have this this sort of, um, and I call it an echo because you hear the sound twice, you hear it simultaneously, but you have mm. sort of colors going on parallel to one another and so and again it 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 creates this sort of inner space and perhaps his music combined with the poetry is just mm -hmm. 
intensifying mm -hmm. the, the the experience um and and the essence of what these texts are about and i really think well plus between us i would say you take the the texts out mm -hmm. and you still know what it's about because the music has this power it's interesting it's, it's ultimately the most i'm absolutely convinced of it, the most expressive uh of all art forms and and the rawest mm -hmm. and that is the most primal in the best sense of the word mm -hmm. and so um yeah so it's uh it's more than added value mm -hmm. now so we've spoken a little bit on the music itself and and the poetry what about the performance this is a live recording is that right that's uh coming yeah. out in march um when and where was this done so this was done in September in Berlin in the okay. uh, Turbinenhalle, uh, the mm -hmm. turbine hall, and uh, near the um, Stinitz Lake. You know they call it Amstinitz um, See, mm -hmm. outside of Berlin, um, on the outskirts, but absolutely beautiful, beautiful place. Um, and that's where the concert took place. Okay, and you um, mentioned that you were able to play in front of the composer. He was there too. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. And so. We met him just before, just before walking out on stage, mm -hmm. um, which was both, you know, wonderful and and intimidating. So For sure. I mean, I had the experience with Abu Pert already, but it's it's mm -hmm. something which you know, I mean, as as interpreters, we always we always fantasize about meeting composers and and asking them, you know, what brought them to to writing these pieces and, mm -hmm. and what the artistic processes and what their source of inspiration is so knowing that we were going to be able to do that but of course having the composer present you, your, your biggest hope is that you do not disappoint and that you somehow make them make them proud sure to play their music and uh, so it feels like even more of a responsibility but he seemed very pleased um of course, had interesting things to say, and because mm -hmm. we intend on on carrying the repertoire to to more places and hopefully mm -hmm. sharing it with more audiences, it was uh, you know it was it was fascinating to listen mm -hmm. to him speak about about what these songs mean for him and and you know what the idea is, um, and so yeah, it was it was a very a deeply fulfilling experience. Wonderful. Well, we are very, very excited to listen to the whole album. Elaine Grimo, thank you so much for your time and congratulations on Silent Songs. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. For our listeners, be sure you check out that album. And the good news is you do not have to wait long at all because it's coming out this March with Deutsche Grammophon. I'm Mary Claire Murphy. And until next time, this is Classical Conversations.